Greetings, nerds. This is Seaman Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, sir. How are you doing this Tuesday evening? It's November, and I, I was thinking about this recently because um, November is the month of feasting, right? And yep. eating because of uh, our lovely Thanksgiving holiday. Yep. And it's funny because for the past several weeks, all Will has said constantly is we are sure eating right now because yep. man is content. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm we like, we're, drinking, we're feasting we're yeah we're gonna feast tonight <laughs> yeah it's wrapping up though in november it's supposed well, to be a feast but yeah, yeah maybe maybe speaking of like feasting and you know we are we are going to be talking about the penguin and for the last two weeks now my my panthers uh have, have won games and uh and so all season well since bryce Young, who was our quarterback beginning of the season but then got benched and now he's back but, you know, with the Penguin that we're going to be covering tonight, all this time, I was like, who does Vic, the actor who plays Vic, uh, Rennie Feliz, remind me of? Mm-hmm. And it's Bryce Young. Oh, that's I hilarious. Can't, I can't unsee it now. When Bryce is doing yeah. press conferences or whatever, I'm just like, that, that's Vic. <laughs> right, yeah, right. I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it. <laughs> no, no. One, once you see something like that yeah. or make a connection, like... The poor guy who plays Julian. I've said this numerous times. I'm just like, you're that character from Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see it. And, I mean, granted, I don't know. We'll we'll talk about Colin Farrell in a bit. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. before we before we go there, um, we we kind of talked about our show rundown and some notes, and so they're still on here. So I'm just gonna bring it up, and we're gonna share some quick thoughts um, because there was a D23 in Brazil, which released a bunch of trailers that I did not watch, and Will did because he's a sucker, and <laughs> and I, I I did. Now sometimes sometimes what happens is I will be on Twitter or or twit her TikTok, and um. I will casually not unmute, but I will see the images flash. Yeah. <laughs> no dialogue, but you saw the images. Yeah. So yeah, what, yeah. yeah. I, I hear what's going on. Boom, boom, fight, fight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Making those poses, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and, I, and I'm pretty sure I've watched at least 75% of Thunderbolt's trailer. Um, yeah. I seem to only manage to get to the same parts. And the moment they all start fighting each other, I'm just like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I just felt like it was just like a, a, a dollar store, like the Suicide Squad. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. It is. It is, except for one, well, two factors for me. Yeah, I yeah. love me some Florence Pugh. I love see, me I some don't, see, Florence Pugh. I, 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 I start, yeah, I'm not go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I love me some Florence Pugh and some Sebastian Stan. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just, I have always been a Florence girl. Yeah. And, and so I will, I will go and, and watch the movie and, and you'll, and you'll probably be right. <laughs> but, <laughs> I but, know. I'm, yeah. I'm just not feeling it. I just, I'm just not. And I, I mean, I'm sure it's probably fine. It'll probably be good. But, um, yeah, it's just like, I just feel like it's derivative of things. But uh, the other one, but, of course, there was the Captain America 4 uh, trailer, the actual trailer um, mm-hmm. for, for that. And, you know, they really, you know, really fleshed it out. I, I really, the thing I liked about it was it really felt like it was getting back to that political thriller that, um, that, that we were promised in Secret Invasion, but that we didn't get. <laughs> so, uh and 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 also just the feelings that we we had with uh, Winter Soldier, um, and, and with Captain America too. So it feels I don't know. I just feel I have a good feeling about this one. Uh, see, I am the opposite. It's yeah. so funny that we're the opposite on both of these movies because yeah. I have a bad feeling about um, Cap Four. Mm-hmm. And it, but don't get me wrong. It's not like I have a great feeling about Thunderball. Either. <laughs> I I am very well aware, and I'm essentially when I'm saying about Thunderbolts, I'm taking it for what it is, and just gonna watch some actors I really enjoy have some yeah, fun. That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah. So so and and the same can be said for Cap Four because I love me some Anthony Mackie. Especially, mm-hmm. I love when he's on tour for movies. He's great. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Man, <laughs> he knows how to do an interview. He does. And I love how much how much of a hard time he gives Tom Holland. Yeah. So I just, there's just something about all of the conversations pertaining to the reshoots. Yeah. Well, and yeah. The, where where that's what is the seed of my doubt. But... I mean, I think we both are on the side of also Cap, um, Captain America or Falcon and Winter Soldier was not a bad Disney Plus show. Like, if you're looking at everything, it's actually a a fairly decent one. Yeah. So I, my doubt doesn't come from, like, continuing that story. It's more just some of the financial decisions and stuff where i'm just like well they reshot and they had a time i don't i don't know yeah. um, because reshoots never bode well for movies um but yeah. you know yeah. things can happen it's for sure for sure yeah <laughs> but uh yeah those were some of the big those were the things and of course feige uh got on stage talked about i guess he well i don't know if he got well he had an interview with a local publication down in brazil and it went through a bunch of different topics mm-hmm. of course he mentioned blade Right. That uh, they're committed, still committed think, to it. Uh, sure, that's what yeah. they all say. <laughs> that's what they all say, exactly. Uh, I teased you know, uh, Wanda, Scarlet Witch, you know, didn't say that she's coming back, but he just said how and when she's going to come back. So, you know, so, oh, yeah. I heard the theories and it makes yeah. me excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's, there's that. <laughs> um, and then, of course, uh, Miles Morales uh, yep. will be. Yep, that was another thing. Of course, uh, of course, but we still probably won't get beyond the Spider Verse until probably 2027 at this rate. But, um, but after that, Spidey did say. I forgot about it. Huh? I forgot about Beyond the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be coming out in February. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I now we're not, it, not for two years, maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was also the one who told you something like this was going to happen, but I also forgot this past year that that was even a thing that I was still yeah. waiting for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But, but yeah, something you know, on the bright side, I guess we you know we'll get Miles eventually in live action. You know, we'll you know by that point we'll all you know. <laughs> Somebody can something you explain to- this to me. Um, because, okay, I just saw on our rundown, you have like the highlights of the Disney plus sizzle reel. I didn't really watch it. Okay, guys, but I did randomly see and I'm like, wait a second. Is that the bear? Yep. Why, why is the bear being shown in a Disney plus sizzle reel? Season four, June, 2025. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Why is it being oh, shown at Disney oh, Plus? Remember, Disney Plus and Hulu are the same service now. Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They okay. got the bu- yeah. It's still, the bundled service now. Yeah. Still very weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking of sizzle reels, and while well, go ahead and you know this you know, other other thing, I mean, a lot of people probably already heard about the X Men comment um with with uh disney with the uh, marvel from d23 but you know speaking of sizzle reel yeah andor had uh was had some scenes from uh the upcoming season which is coming in uh, april 22nd of next year which we did get also get that information at d23 this past weekend in brazil uh but yeah i mean i i am andor is coming and i'm, I'm all there for it i mean we got the tie interceptor that uh that uh, looks like a prototype. Uh, we had K uh, K S O uh, Cassian Stroyd. I mean, the, the scene there with the, probably the massacre of uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the planet now, but they referenced it in Star Wars Rebels. So I mean, it's just like I'm just I'm just so there for that show. The first half of 2024 is looking very bright. Yeah, 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. like the feast. Be the, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me. 25 the feast that will continue through the first part of 2025 man 
I don't know. I don't know if the second half can match it. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. But granted, granted, because you know I love to be a rain cloud. Mm-hmm. I do have to admit, this year I thought I was gonna do some feasting, and everyone knows I've been pretty much like, huh? So that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. I was, as we joked last week after we were finished recording it's just like you know the last two months has been it's made up for for you at least i hope it's the you, you I don't definitely think. have had a good some good meals the last two months uh, I've, the, I've, yeah. yeah i've enjoyed it a little bit more especially our conversations yeah. um because we've been kind of more on the same page than on other stuff but at the same time i don't I don't know what um if it made up for the onslaught that occurred <laughs> but <laughs> um but yeah well, and for yeah. and are looking good um I love me some diego luna um the information about how it'll be span across 12 years yeah it'll, yeah three 12 years. Years, every every three episodes is four years that's fascinating yeah. um structure of a season that i'm i'm curious about and and yeah we got what if season three coming over break we'll tackle that at the top of 2025 and then on top of all this like we have to have some sort of casting announcement slash slash like who he's gonna play um because denzel washington is right now doing a press tour for a little old film called gladiator 2 the ruining of my childhood memories with gladiator um as i like to call it um and it has been announced that he is um set to be a part of black panther 3 no one knows role is there speculation right i mean i know that there's speculation but but Will usually tells me like good speculation. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not not the Kang of it all. I can't for sure. <laughs> well, thank God no. for that. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, but uh, yeah, that was I saw that this morning, and I guess yeah, he was in uh, I guess on the on the Today Show in Australia, uh, and I guess he just forgot that these things kind of you know things like this can will go viral like no matter where in the world you like say it. Um, and so, yeah, he, uh, he 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 dropped that little nugget. Also, the fact that he uh, he was, you know, I'll just read the quote. He said, a quote, at this point in my career, I'm only interested in working with the best. I don't know how many more films I'm going to make. Probably not that many. I want to do things that I haven't done. I played Othello at 22. I'm not going to play it at 70. After that, I'm playing Hannibal. After that, I've been talking with Steve McQueen about a film. And then he added, after that, Ryan Coogler is right at a part for me in the next Black Panther. After that, I'm going to do the film Othello, and I'm going to do King Lear. After that, I'm going to retire, end quote. So that's exactly, that's from Denzel's mouth in that interview. And uh, yeah, and who he's going to play, I have no idea. But I'm just excited. You know, it's one of those things that fan, fan casting has been happening for years about getting Denzel in the MCU. And, you know. I'm all there for it. I mean, we've had Anthony Hopkins, we've had Robert Redford, we've had at this point, we, you know, who else, you know, at this point, Leonardo DiCaprio could show up for all I know. <laughs> no, no, we don't need him. We don't, we don't need Leo. Leo. We don't need Leo. But no, but as far as like our, you know, the best of our best thespians in our in our modern age, I mean, you know, Denzel's, you know, one of the best. So, you know, we're, we're getting him. Yeah. 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 Um. Oh, and then there is a Peacemaker teaser, too. <laughs> More <laughs> 2025. Yep. Another thing, I, I just watched the images. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you needed to see. <laughs> That's all I needed to see. Hey, hey, I'm also the person who was suckered enough to go and see Joker 2 in theaters. And somebody on this call hasn't gone and seen it. Yeah, I'll probably get around to it at some point. Nope. But, uh yeah, yeah, at some point. But the other thing that did drop this uh, as us, we were in our pre-show, we were talking like it seemed like nothing was going on. I know there was this other little thing going on that I don't want to get into because, you know, you get all everyone. Make, it may make, make some people happy and make some people depressed. But uh, there was the Mission Impossible uh, Final Reckoning trailer that also oh, yeah. dropped. Yeah. And uh, Tom Cruise, again, is our, probably our last like, you know, we were talking about Denzel being that, you know, 
one of the best of the best. Tom Cruise is definitely one of the probably our last true action hero. <laughs> uh, that 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 uh, that quote at the end of the of the uh, trailer was just like, you know, need do you to trust me one last time, Tom? I do. <laughs> I don't know. Vin Diesel with Fast and Furious seems to give Tom a run for his money. No, uh, no, they're they're different classes. They're different classes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I agree, but I also it's so funny to hear him. I understand why. Trust me, I do. I get it. Even yeah. though I don't watch those movies because I'm not an action movie kind of girly, but. So I equate Tom Cruise to his other stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's a he's Jerry Maguire to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or he's he's, um, ma- he's Maverick to many people. Yeah. Or yeah, pretty, you know. Right, Maverick. I mean, it's a classic. I don't know yeah. why I don't really equate Maverick or or a Top Gun to being an action movie. I know why it should be, but I just for some reason I don't. Yeah. Probably because the Dr. Green from ER is also in it. Yeah, true, true. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, anyways, no. Um, Will, I'm very happy for you and that you can continue your love affair with Tom Cruise. I do. Um, <laughs> this summer as well. I know you've missed him this yeah, summer. I, I did really. I, I enjoyed the Dead Reckoning part. Well, they don't call it part one anymore. But oh, I did. Well. I did. Enjoy, I, I did enjoy. I, I mean, I, I enjoyed the Mission Impossible franchise, and that was a cool thing about that trailer. They just had, you know, they have woven such a tapestry of with this with Ethan Hunt and his story. So, so I I'm, I'm all there for the Final Reckoning because I think it's definitely gonna. It will. It will definitely be a exciting, exciting finish. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that leads us into a five minute conversation about Superman and Lois. <laughs> 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 um, yes, we watched, we finally started the last season of Superman and Lois um, with episodes one and two, episode one, the end and the beginning, as Superman is locked in a brutal battle with. Um, Doomsday, Lois and the boys race against time to save General Lane, and episode two, a world without Lana and Sarah join the fight against Luther, who starts making moves in Smallville, Jordan and Jonathan butt heads over an important decision. So it's it's funny. This mm-hmm. I um cannot say that I missed this show. <laughs> <laughs> I also um it just I'm glad I watched this before I watched the Penguin season finale, Mm -hmm. because if I had done the uh, reverse, who knows what I would be saying about this show. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's 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 so it, it, it is it is a little fascinating to watch something that is so grounded in the Arrowverse and um, and how the show's used to be and now what they've evolved into as we yeah. look at the penguin and and Agatha all along and and it's like okay I get it so so the genre has kind of almost outgrown the more procedural type of thing and also the more outgrown the primary focus on the heroes mm-hmm. um that being said, um, the woman who plays, um, I think her name is Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, um, told you. yeah. 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 She she as Lois is always good. The mm-hmm. Lois character is just written in such a strong way mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that I think should just be applauded. And um, I still miss the original Jonathan. <laughs> there's stuff like two even though it's been a while since i've watched superman and lois as soon as it started i was like hi this is not the original jonathan Mm -hmm. (laughs) i just the casting changes like that always throw me with tv shows and i and it's 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 hard to overcome it and i think very few shows can and have um and simultaneously um, I just, 
I think that the um, it was interesting, but I also am like, well, is he really dead? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and that's fair. That's fair because I mean, this is their this is their take on death of death of Superman, which we've seen that done. Let's see, we saw it in the Snyderverse. <laughs> we, you know, we've uh, and and um. As far as and I think uh, I think there's been a few animated versions of it as well. So I mean it's you know obviously the, the first time it was the story came out was in back in '93. I remember when I was in college and like um, the comic book came out, you could not get a copy of that mm-hmm. um, of, of of the first run of uh, Death of Superman, which you know and so we've seen the about you know we've seen Superman and Doomsday fight before and and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean I hear what you're saying. I mean it's you know for a tv budget it, you know I, I thought it was a pretty good fight i mean they did well with it and 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 i like the way they interspersed the fight throughout the episode but i completely 100 percent agree with what you said about bitty talk and, and her lois i mean lois is like the, the heart of the show um mm-hmm. and and really you know another, another thing too is you know they they they, they kept the continuity and you know because you know the, the events of the first episode are, you know, picks right up from where we were with the end of season three. You know, she's still recovering from cancer. She was, you know, scared, and it even referenced, you know, she's going to go in and get her reconstruction surgery and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, so she's dealing with all this. And then, of course, you know, we got Bizarro Doomsday, uh, which is, again, they did, you know, they've taken some well, what, what I do like about this show is they do take well-established stories and, and lore and, and, and make it their own. Um and and so I think that's one of yeah. the pluses about this show. Especially um, what was interesting with these two episodes is I just kept watching um, to, and talking about, like, not just iconic storylines, um, but characters. Mm-hmm. And so that brings us to Lex, because Michael Cudlitz, he, he is just eating. Um, mm-hmm during these two episodes and it's also the way his his character is written Mm -hmm. um i knew i recognized him from the walking dead yep (laughs) um that is so different because yeah yeah, he's a businessman and you have what's her face um and there's that awkward weird moment between them where it's like i've always wondered what it would be like for you to be free but she's also a girl boss Mm -hmm. and um But anyway, I I especially noticed when it was him and I think Amanda in the bar and they were they were drinking and he's. He's clearly fresh out of prison. Yeah. And and that's just there's I, I can appreciate how. Even like. This is a version of Lex we've never really seen. Yeah. And and it just. There's something very raw and and honestly a bit more menacing than mm-hmm. the guy in the suit that we're so used to seeing um paraded around. And and so I really appreciated that. Um I especially just loved it <laughs> when <laughs> Jordan tried to confront him. I think it was in the first episode. Um, it's not at the end of the second episode. I'm talking about the first confrontation between oh, yeah, yeah. him and the look on Lex's face <laughs> 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 because it wasn't he wasn't happy. He he also didn't give it away that he was putting the pieces together real quickly, mm-hmm. but you could also tell in the performance in his eyes that he was putting together the pieces and thank God for that. Because the moment that scene happened, I, I said to myself, I swear if Lex doesn't walk out of there thinking that that is definitely Superman's son and Lois's son, I I don't know what to do. (laughs) My suspension of disbelief can only be suspended. Um, so, but I was I was so happy they made him also not only different and unique, but a smart Lex Luthor because yeah. that's what we need. We need smart characters, and it doesn't matter if the budget is cheaper. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if the CGI is not that great. If yeah. the characters are smart, 
then then it then it's it's t- it makes it for a more compelling story no matter what yeah. um yep. regular procedural they have to work around yeah yeah and i think that's uh, to your point i mean i think even though this show still has the vestiges you know even even when the reverse was on his remaining days you know they were already you know this we we you know, we when we've talked about this with the show in the earlier seasons how it on the one hand it was like yeah it, it still had you know it still had that cw but but on the other hand it felt like it was also still out of place where it, where it would have fit better on like whenever dc had their streaming platform or or even like you know or max as far as a series because it was it was that it was that it's, it's sort of that tweener show like you said with the evolution of Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, well, no, I think it is. I I think it is. I mean, I do. It's not, I mean, Penguin, we'll we'll get into in a little bit. I mean, that's just next level. I mean, that's like Masterclass. Agatha this past season, also that, you know, over, you know, it's it's that next level as far as shows. And then we've got a lot of things that, you know, have been very hard to watch over the last few years. Superman and Lois, I think, has been very consistent. It's been better than some. It's it's been better than some of the other, you know, the, the Arrowverse shows, especially towards those end runs. I mean, I I agree. Yeah. I think it's yeah. also though there's a little bit of recency bias. I mean, this is its fourth season, yeah. And um, and let me tell you, see what I remember about Superman and Lois is the most recent season, which wasn't the best season. The best season of Superman and Lois is the first season. And then it because the first season has an iconic episode, um, talking about the miscarriage episode, but yeah. then you, then the second season it kind of gets a little loopy towards the end, especially. And then by the third season, it's just like what? But I feel like this season, knowing that it's the last season, mm-hmm. clearly written with that understanding. Yeah, true. I think it's coming full circle and I could potentially deliver something on par with the first season. Yeah. So, um, good point. Which, yeah. which, which I'm excited for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and also, I think given that they did, to your point about knowing that it is the final season uh, and the way, you know, they only have 10 episodes. And I know we're, 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 we're starting a, a month in. Um, so, I think the way it's written, you know, given that they are doing their take on death of Superman, you know, they, 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 they you know, episode two starts with, the, you know, the, the sentence, you know, it, well, ended episode one, and, you know, going to episode two does start with the scene from the comic book, you know, as far as, you know, Clark being held there uh, by, by doomsday. Uh, but the, uh, you know, but they, they do, they do sort of, you know, you put them in a suspension animated tank or whatever, and you know, to sort of set the stage for like, okay, we're, you know, we, since we don't have 20 episodes we're in, 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 or another season, we can't drag this, we can't drag Clark being gone too long, out too long. And I haven't watched a single episode. It really was first, this weekend was the first time I watched any of the series since it's, since it's aired this, this year. Um, so I think they're, bring, you know, bringing a little, they're, 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 show, they're having a death. You know, but they're not going to do it like it was done in the comics where we had like Android Superman, we had Superboy clone, we had all these other things. I think they're, again, they're putting their own spin on it. You know, we did get the Brainiac name drop. And of course, Tom Cavanaugh is going to be showing up in this series, uh, this final season. So most likely he's Brainiac. Um, And, and, you know, the other thing too, like with the second episode, whenever they like crushed Superman's heart, and you know, again, showing jo- Jordan's you know impulsiveness and stuff, and 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 and, and, and to that point, as you were saying, Lex is very menacing. I mean, those all the things he was, that he was doing in this in this series um, so far, you know, def- definitely is a Lex with an axe to grind because you know he's lost 17 years of his life, and he feels like su- that, that Lois in particular cost him his relationship with his daughter. So I mean, it's those motivations there definitely give us a, a you know a Lex that we we're not used to seeing in 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 live action. So yeah, I mean I think you're right. I mean it does have a potential to to be like that first season as far as going out on a strong note. Yeah. 
Yeah, too bad they can't get bring back original Jonathan. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the kid is doing fine. Yeah, yeah. But Michael Bishop's hanging in there. Very, but, it is yeah. very noticeable how yeah. um, how he's not given a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah. that leads us to the Penguin season finale, episode eight, Great or Little Thing. So I'm just, I'm going to start off with a little, some nitpicks. And um, as well as um, somewhat of my overall thought, the first half of this episode, and I'm talking from beginning through the um, mother-son therapy session tied to a care, tied to chairs, held hostage by a psychopath, Um, that one by by Sophia, Um, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Fully engrossed, fully engaged, loved it. Edge of my feet. After we get out of that scene, though, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. My mind starts to think. <laughs> and suddenly, I am more thinking about, okay, well, that happened. So that means this will happen. So that means that. And why is it taking so long for this show to end <laughs> or this episode to end? And I don't, I don't know. I don't get me wrong. I loved it. It's a great piece Mm. of television. Very strong ending. I just get a little annoyed with all that. Oh my God, I was so shocking. Was it? Was it? Were you paying attention? They told you exactly what was going to happen about halfway through the episode. Okay. So, and, and then the fact that, oh, it was so shocking when Vic died. Was it because for some reason, as soon as the, Vic said, "You're my family," yep. I was yep. like, "Bye bye, you're yep. gonna die." Same, same. <laughs> yeah. And also, I'm, I'm, I know we've we've talked about this. Will is very well aware that I'm dead inside. So, do I hate Penguin? No, I don't hate him, because I've also never really like. I don't stay like in the, throughout this season. It's not that I'm rooting for the penguin though. Mm-hmm. I'm just watching a story unfold. I'm not mm-hmm. like I'm technically not rooting for anyone. No, not <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm just like living in this world, being told the story. Like I I just sometimes I question, like, are we watching the same thing? You know and. Yeah. And I think that's why sometimes I come off a bit more negative about things. It's just because I'm like, okay, I'm tired of hearing people say this because I don't think it's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I, no. Will, I will say um, that by him killing Vic, it proved, okay, without a doubt, this was not the Gotham version of Bake, Breaking Bad. No, 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 <laughs> because Walt never killed Jess, okay? Exactly, no. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, this is not what that is. This is Sopranos. This is a mobster. This is Godfather, okay? This is Yabushige yeah. <laughs> in Gotham, <Yeah>. okay? <laughs> I don't care, but all right, well, your 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 thoughts. <laughs> yeah, 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 I completely yeah, I, you're right. I mean, I, I I agree with what you said. I mean, even Sunday night after, you know, we were uh we were, we, we were messaging after the show was over and and I agree. I was like, you know, I saw, I saw the, I saw Vic's death coming. Mm-hmm. What worked for me, it, it was the, the shock of it wasn't so much that he killed Vic. I think it was just, it was the, it was just the way it was so well executed that I was just like, I knew it was coming. But even when it happened, and the look on, uh, that Colin Farrell that, that 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 Oz had on his face after it was done, that just I, I don't know. I, I, it was like I don't even know what what how to, what adjective to describe it. But it was just you know if you've watched the episode, you know what I'm talking about. And that was like holy. I was like I was like holy fuck. He you know he did this to Vic, and I guess for me. I mean, like, as, as I was joking at the beginning of the episode, I was like, yeah, I see Bryce Junk, it's like Vic now. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but, but, uh, but no, but seriously, though, I think, 
I think what this show, what this series did was because of all these characters that, and, and as you noted, you know, there was no, there were no heroes in this show. Um, no. and, and, and anyone who would like fall of Oz or Sophia as anti-hero or anything like that. No, she's a, she's a psychopath. He's a sociopath. I mean, and there was, and there was, and they'll kill you for, again, like, you know, because whenever he killed Vic, it was just like, you, you said it. I mean, he, he, when Vic said he was family, Penguin saw that as a weakness. And that was like, I got to take him out. And then the other thing too, that was really, you know, I thought as I thought back on the series and like, you know, uh-huh. as you know, Vic was looked up to Oz as a mentor and Oz, yep. you know, took him under his wing. And then he took the the thing that reminded me, the thing that like stuck, stood out to me with that scene, I think that really like just sealed it for me, was when he took the ID card out and threw it into the river. Mm-hmm. And it, I, I thought back to the line where they were like, when, when Oz and Vic were talking and they were going to be talking about our names forever. Mm-hmm. And then he just, but, you know, but because he saw Vic as a liability, he just threw him away. Mm-hmm. It's like he did that card. And that just like it just really just really captures who this man is and that well many things captured it but that was just like symbolically at the end there that just still you know just reminded us who this man is so yeah i i, I agree with you i it, it wasn't it was not a shock um it would actually it would have been a shock if he actually lived to be honest given what we what we what built built up to what, what what we've seen over the last eight episodes with this character Right, right. Um, so I will be honest, I did watch the episode, but I don't remember Penguin's face the way you did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, but I think that the standout moment of Colin's performance in this episode was not that scene, but it was the scene when um, Sophia reveals that mm. his mom has known all along that he killed his brothers yeah. oh. and why that see that moment was just because he just was staring and, mm. and I immediately thought to myself, see, this is, this is why this is such a good performance. I don't know who's a better actor penguin or Colin Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> because the commitment to the lie is making me now doubt. Well, was it a lie? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. we have, best like did that happen we're told things happen but sometimes you can have an unreliable narrator so Mm -hmm. what like was were we shown that from her perspective like what is going on here and and it's like for for those moments for some reason that that's the face that stuck to me the most um and showed that character how it is um maybe maybe during um I was like, oh, he's strangling him, and I got up or something. I, I don't think I got up, but I don't I understand. Remember. Yeah, I know, no, no, but you're right. I mean, that was another one. I mean, there's just so many, like, I mean, throughout right. this whole season, there's been so many moments like that but, where it's like, yeah. And, and, it, I, yeah. and I think, like, really re- reflecting on this episode and the season, um, I think why the first half worked so much for me is because my love for the actress who plays uh, – Oz's mom, Frances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her performance. I mean, everyone's talking about um, Sophia. Everyone's mm-hmm. talking about her. But Frances, and like, it was so good because, and, 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 and yeah, they were both, like, we observed the most bizarre torture scene ever to occur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did. <laughs> Where, where it's it's like a a villain has your deepest darkest secrets and are going to use them to turn the one you love against the most and to unbury this because it's just it was such a good cold open to come off of the last week's episode and to suddenly start to get Francis's perspective on yeah. the aftermath of her two boys dying mm-hmm. um, in the Gotham gutters and the realization that her other son was the cause. Mm-hmm. And oh my God. Um, 
kind of makes her illness like did that start because of this trauma because my god that would a train other. and then you have a great conversation with rex we can rex we can rule him out as being the father um he's always been a stand-in and and i like that moment you brought it up before like vic oz filled a father figure role for vic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and rex mentions that to francis yeah. like he doesn't want people who want power and I think maybe that's also why that Oz knew if he continued to nurture, um, nurture uh, Vic in a way, Vic will turn on him. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was like the vulnerability is one thing, but it's also like Vic and Lou got all of these lieutenants to turn on their bosses. Yeah, yeah. So why would Oz be any different? Like exactly, continue. So yeah. So it was a very smart move in the mm -hmm. long run. But anyway, and then but and you're explained that through this this monologue of Rex about like how he gets his crew together and it's that missing father. But in yeah. Oz's case, like um, Francis can do that. And and oh man, well if you can't do it, then what if you just let him go? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I don't have kids, and I also don't have psychopaths for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Will can relate to this. Nope, I can't. But, but my God, the the emotional turmoil to do that to a person to be like, I just lost two kids. Mm -hmm. at the hands of one kid who loves me but now i'm resentful for uh, for obvious reasons yeah it's just oh my god i i just i can't i can't talk enough about that whole that whole this whole storyline yeah. has been played out so fascinating um and so so well done that I really liked how we saw so much from Francis's perspective. And mm -hmm. then probably why I think the second half of the episode is weaker is because she had a stroke and is a vegetable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't know if it's weaker, but it definitely, I mean, oh, we, yeah, we, we, that's my opinion. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I the only place where I felt like it was for me, where it felt weak was the when Sophia started, you know, burning down the house yeah. and and that kind of stuff. That was that was the if I had a nitpick, I was kind of like, okay, here here we yeah. go again. Um, so like, I'm sorry, I knew it was going to be a double cross. Like yeah. like, there's no way in hell. And then I never thought that he was going to kill because he. He told us what he was going to do with Sophia yep. when he was talking to the councilman. <laughs> okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was not, yeah, that was like, you know, that's because, you know, again, it has been, you know, it's been a through line throughout this whole series, how, it, it, and you bring, and you brought up the good point with like, with Vic and Link um, and, and why I killed, killed Vic. I mean, the through line is, you know, the upper class always underestimates us. Mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 ignores us so you know so him doing that you know you know the crook knows a crook so he's like okay let me find the, the crooked councilman that i can use to leverage you know to get my to, to, to take sophia off the board and that's what well, he did he already, he, didn't we already meet this councilman like he already has stuff on him yeah yeah so now he's just like kind of continuing to crane yeah. that door open and also we've seen earlier in previous episodes how no matter the hand that is dealt oz takes a moment reassesses mm -hmm. and changes the way to manipulate the situation in his favor and that's Always. what he did he was given that amount of time yep. to do that yep um and the moment he said, like, like you're gonna find Sophia's car down there, I'm like, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. I did. Yeah. Yeah. When it was <laughs> when it when it happened, and they were, you know, we drove her. We, you know, had to driving her out there, taking her for a ride, and then 
and it's how it was. I, I just I did clap. I was like, even though, like you said, he told we 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 were told that this was going to happen. But again, I think right. what made it so effective was just execution of it. Right, right. And I can appreciate and understand how Sophia, it was clear to me Sophia didn't understand. Like, yeah. to me, yeah. the biggest wink and nod was the moment he says, you're going to hell, sweetheart. Yep. Because because death isn't hell for her. Death nope. would be freeing her. Hell yep. is putting her back. And so that that leads me to something that I don't think enough people are talking about. Yeah. Because people are so focused on on the fact that Oz kills Vic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he kills Sal. And he kills yeah. his brothers. There's yeah. a trend here. Yeah. He kills a lot of men. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's fascinating that the women who are perceivably closest to him, I'm talking Eve Carlo, I'm yep. talking his mom, I'm talking Sophia. Yep. They don't die. They don't die. That's a good but yep. They do get punished. Yeah. Even Eve, because there's no way in <laughs> <laughs> she has she's repenting right now and the moment i saw her i was just like oh oh my, my god yeah. Eve, i'm so sorry for you and then and then it gets worse because then he he asked her to say things and the moment he says ma you're proud i'm like oh this is the worst oh. kind of role play ever yeah oh gross god, but, yeah the Freudian things that are going on there yeah we talked about that seriously before, but, <laughs> but it's it's also, and it's something like the the complexity that they managed to develop for Oz mm -hmm. um, over the course of these eight episodes is just all encaptured for me. The moment we see his mom in the penthouse mm -hmm. looking out over Gotham unable to move like clear vegetable and he comes over he, he says he's being very oz she can't say anything she can't move and it's like and he says it's exactly this is exactly what you wanted and kisses her on the cheek and goes yep. and all that plays in my mind is that scene early on where he, mm -hmm. she's like if my mind goes before my body you best put me down yep now it's complex because on one hand, in that moment, you like the earlier scene, you view him as a son who loves his mom mm -hmm. and he can't put her down because she's not a dog. I'll never forget that line. Yep. But simultaneously, you've just watched this man kill his apprentice. You've, you've seen him burn people alive. Mm -hmm. You've seen him do horrible shit yeah. and kill his own brothers yeah. and also you know he knows she knew he killed his brothers and on top of that plotted to potentially kill him with yep. Rex mm -hmm. punishment Yep. you don't get to go until I say you can exactly oh my god yes. like, fucking classic really? narcissist yeah Oh, geez, because they they managed to show all the angles of that. And all can be true and all are true for mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Totally fascinating. And you're so spot on. It's all about yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, we watch so many paternal shows this is a maternal show it's <laughs> just so <laughs> i mean but at the same time it's like is it because you also is. have sophia who deals so much has so much shit from her father right. i mean the whole hangman episode is just is yeah. all about men suppressing women so again they're able yeah. to view these kind of things through so many different angles that it's a very balanced show. It, it is a balanced show. And like you said, if anybody was like rooting for this, for Oz in this show, uh, I mean, we're, we're watching two different, you're, you're watching something else and, you, and you're not, you're, you're missing the entire subtext and sometimes subtext and sometimes very, very open things yeah. that they, like you just, what you just shared um, with, with Oz and his mom, 
um, th- th- that was going on in this show. I mean, y- y- there's just nothing likable or redeemable about this man. Really? At all. At and, all. And, and nor should there be. Yeah. But it's it's and, weird, though, because, like, like I just said, you're not a dog. I can't put you down. Like, you're yeah. my ma. Like, there are these moments of humanity that we have been privileged to see that I think is hard to reconcile with the monster. And I think the the purpose is really to put us almost pretty much in Francis's shoes. Yeah. Being like, this is my son. And I see like, he's, he's my son. I see the good nature in him, but to reconcile that with all the bad stuff. And I, know how you go into the finale rooting for Oz or liking Oz. He killed his brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, how well, do you go from last week still on that train? Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe liking is too strong a word, but I mean, yeah. you just, you know, but, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, think I think like him, yeah. but you also recognize him for what he is because True. at the same yeah. time you're also thinking underneath all that makeup and prosthetics that's called freaking feral yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. killing it. <laughs> just killing it yeah getting mad at me already i mean it's just like you know everybody just about everyone in this show you know we we will see when emmy nominations roll around either lead actor lead actress supporting actor supporting actress because there were just some phenomenal performances that uh that we were able to see with the, with this the, with this series and and who knows I mean you know they, Colin Farrell has left open I mean we do know that that this character will show up in Batman two and three uh, he did mm-hmm. confirm that and um, and we and and they did open leave open the door that they could they could possibly do a season two if the writing is there i mean if they bring especially if they bring lauren lafranc back i mean everybody talks about matt reeves lauren lafranc was the showrunner for this show speaking of giving women credit and (laughs) and, um and she just she just killed it i mean she it was just just give props where props is due yes it's matt reeves world but he handed this world over to her and he and she set up a a a formidable character for now when we go to batman two and three we are, we you know they've taken the penguin you know from the burgess meredith kind of you know joke that we saw back in the 60s batman with adam west and and you know even danny devito's and and you know batman returns with michael keaton you know how how I look at that character now is completely different from how from how I look at the character going into this show because of what they what they were able to achieve in this series, so that I can see now I can see why he is such a threat to Batman, legitimately a threat. And I think that goes to yes, it goes to the credit of Matt Reeves, you know, creating a more grounded world of Gotham and you know the, and the character of Gotham. But Lauren LaFranc and and the writing room uh, with this series just took it to the next level. And the directing. And the directing, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going through the eight episodes and I'm looking at the directors and yeah. um, it seems pretty balanced between mm-hmm. male and female directors. Oddly enough, last week's episode was directed by a male. This week's episode was directed by a female. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen. Think, I yeah. think that's pretty fancy because I would have thought the opposite mm-hmm. going into that. Um, Saint. St. Ani was directed by a female, but yeah, yeah. um yeah. Yeah, well, just have to give credit to the give, I mean, I guess I just want to give proper credit to the to the to the creative team, everyone involved, because they 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 you know like whenever we think it back to with both this show and even Agatha, we were like, you know, were were these were these spin-offs really spin-offs that we were needed or wanted or anything probably Absolutely you know not. yeah 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 but like, you know like i'm yeah. sorry nobody came off of the batman being like oh i hope there's a penguin movie i hope there's yeah. a penguin tv show yeah. penguin hardly in the batman from what i remember yeah it's only uh, a, I scene, know so. a lot of people are saying how this show has helped them gain newfound love for the batman probably yeah. because now you can watch that and like the world feels bigger yeah 
Um, yeah. Which is so funny because we're talking about one character and just following yeah. that villain character. Yeah, over the span um, of a, over the span of just a couple of weeks in Gotham or a few yeah. weeks in Gotham. Yeah. Yeah, I still, <laughs> I still think I just in a in a weird way I kind of wish Agatha finale had still aired simultaneous with the Penguin because I think they're the 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 way they did that because Agatha's finale shocked me <laughs> there, were so <laughs> many twists. there were so many things i was like that was not on anyone's bingo card where did that yeah. come from but simultaneously made so much logical sense where it was like like they they continue to be inverses of each other it's mm -hmm. so bizarre um and i love that for not only us in our discussions but also just for viewers who are engrossed in this kind of content in the in this genre where you can have two shows that are similar yet very different yet also are clearly doing what they do best and working yeah. in all the right ways for very different reasons yeah um but but i i just I mean, we can go frame by frame with all of Francis' scenes, but I don't think anybody wants to listen to me do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless no. there's anything I'm forgetting, I don't think there is. No, no, no. I think we. I mean, I think we hit all the major strokes with the with the episode. Um, That's kind of unintended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of mean. Oh <laughs> uh, gosh! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, other than the, yeah, I mean, you know, other than the Batman of it all, which I know we already talked about it. I mean, yeah, there was a bat obligatory bat signal at the end. Uh, you know, yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I was too. I was too. I think I think the show did so, like the strengths were oh. always when it did not fe feel like a Batman show, and then, but but you 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 thought of something. No, I mean nothing. It wasn't nothing really consequential. I mean, we talked about how Sophia ended up back in in Arkham, and of course, Julian is her, you know, is her caretaker again. So I, I think I know. You, I saw I saw on your notes you just had something like, you know, did he ever, you know, when did he leave? And I was just sort of I'm like, maybe he never actually left. Maybe that was just as part of his part of the thing that. that I, you know. Honestly, the way he moved throughout the season, I wouldn't. You, you're probably right. Um, but that was another thing. I didn't hear enough people talk about what we talked about the fact that Sophia and Selena Kyle are related and yes. and the nod that we got at the very end I was like again mm -hmm. knew it called it yep yep <laughs> like, right. yep, Which, yep but but I also I had forgotten that there yeah. has been rumors and speculation about a Catwoman series so True. we might be getting that and that might be a tie-in tie-in yep. there I, I love how even though this has ended and and I am on the side of I don't need a season two of the penguin. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't either. I, I I I really don't. And I think that would be a bad idea. But expanding this world, hell yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. this is what Sony should have been doing decades ago with yes. this. Like th this is what we mean by like villains can stand on their own. Mm -hmm. You just can't make them the good guys. It's I know it's difficult, but you really can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but you can definitely mine their stories because they are psychotic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh man. Oh, it's been so much fun. Um it has but been. It on has that been. note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X and Threads at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. You can find me there, too, at S.J. Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and Threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, comment and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Bye.